here's what you will get in the end. An inventory with a simple list of items showing its amount next to the name and a proper icon and uh, clicking on them will update the name here and the description here and uh, you can put these items into the box. You can remove them by right clicking and you can sort through the categories and you can also add more items and you can also remove the items and once it hits zero it will get removed entirely. Our inventory consists of a lot of button nodes and some labels. Here we have our simple buttons to click to switch the categories. Inside of here we have a scroll container with a VBOX container and that one contains all the item buttons and uh, these are just simple copied versions of that and renamed. And uh, then we have here all those wonderful labels showing all the name and the description. And then we have our quick box. Inside of our quick box there's simply a hbox container containing multiple buttons. And these buttons themselves have simply a label attached for the amount. And our inventory slots have a simple equip label to show if the item is equipped or not. Here you can see what's inside of my item script and this is stuff that we will reference later on. So we have one script that is inside of our autoload and uh, that's our global script. It contains some variables and uh, some functions. And besides that we have four scripts each attached to our scenes. So inside of here we have a signal that will be used whenever we want to update our inventory. We have a button group that is important so that only uh, one of these buttons can be clicked at a time. Then we have our arrays, uh, one for the quick box, one for the player inventory that contains all items and for each category you want to have, you make another array. These two variables are important to show the correct information inside here, inside of our labels. These two variables are very important. This one will tell the quick box which item to place inside of it, and this one will tell it where to put it inside of this array. This part is just for testing. You can basically ignore that. Now we have basically four functions inside of this. The names of these are pretty self-explanatory and we will take a look at this one before we look into the other scripts first and then the rest will make more sense I think. So we have a simple line here that will take our dragged item which is a resource and will place it inside of this array at the index that will be passed inside this variable. And the rest of this is simply so that we cannot have the same item twice inside of that box. And of course we emit our signal that will cause our entire inventory to update. So now we will take a look at our inventory slots. The button scripts are pretty similar but still different. They both have a export resource variable called item data, which is pretty important that you can place something inside of this. And first we take a look at the quick box slot. On ready we connect ourselves to the global signal inventory changed and to the button group. And whenever the inventory is changed and on ready, we will call the update slot function and if I were to run my quick box slot like this you can see it's empty and if I put an item into my item data and right now it will show the item and its amount and here I've connected my button to itself. Um, whenever it is pressed it will simply call the global function put the item into the quick box and now let's take a look at the inventory slot this is similar 
but it also has that little equip marker function to show the equipped sign or hide it whenever it's not in the quick box. So we have our inventory slot focus entered. We connected that signal to ourselves and whenever we have an item data, we will take that and put it inside the global variable instead. Then we emit a signal. Why do we have to do this and not connect it via this wonderful thing here? We have to do that because this button does not exist yet. And finally, we have our inventory slot pressed function connected to itself as well. We simply set our item data to the global variable dragged item so it can be put into the quick box. Next, we take a look at our quick box and inside of here we have the same connecting to the signal and then our updating function that gets called on ready and on inventory changed. And here we just simply say, hey, take the global item data inside of the array and put it inside of our buttons. Here I've connected the buttons to the quick box itself and then I just pass down the number of each button to the global direct item box index so that if we press this button we say the index is 1, 2, 3, up to 10 and put it into this variable here and then we will have this part down here it looks a little overwhelming but it's simply a connection this signal from the buttons to the quick box and we say if the input is UI select which is in my case the right click we take the uh, item data and set it to null and we emit the signal inventory changed from our global script which we can do because it's auto loaded so that everything gets visually updated as well and now we will take a look at the inventory script so here we have our variable with our loaded uh, inventory slot. That's just what's seen. Uh, direct into that. And we have our ready function simply connecting to the globally emitted signal again. So we have this function as well in which we update our slots basically. But in here we will instance them instead. More to that later. And um, other simple stuff is here the three buttons which are these three, they are connected to the inventory and they will make the categories appear or disappear, these ones. And here we have our on inventory slot focused, that's um, whenever the buttons are instanced, they will connect their signal, which was that signal up here, to the inventory and then we can Whenever one button of that is focused, it will update the texture level, these ones, accordingly. And as you can see, uh, first we are removing all the nodes that are inside of that VBox container. As you can see, we have all these uh, placeholder uh, buttons uh, inside of that. That's for demonstration purposes and so that I can align the scene correctly because I want to know where will that show up and all these stuff and so I'm removing all of these items so for each child inside of our node that node we will queue it free so it's empty and then we will do this now and here we are simply taking our player inventory uh, its size, so how many items are inside of that, and for each item inside of it, we will instance a button. That button contains an item data, which will be the global player inventory item data. And then we add that child, and once we add that child, we connect that focus signal to it. And for the others, it's basically the same as you can see. But instead of the normal player inventory, which contains all our items, we will just 
use the player inventory for flowers. So currently that array is still empty, but another function will fill that. Exactly to fill this empty array, we have our function sort to different categories in which we would take data from our player inventory and put it inside of the different arrays. So in that sort function, as you maybe saw, is being called inside of our inventory script whenever it is changed and whenever we are on ready. And that basically concludes it for the inventory script. So um, all that's left to do is explaining the functions inside of the global script. And um, we will take a closer look at this one. First, we check if our player inventory isn't empty. Then, for each item in player inventory, we will take a look if that item is already in our array. If it isn't inside that array, we will load that item and look inside its category variable and see if it matches our array category. And if that is the case, it will append that item into our array. And that is the way how we fill these ones up. Keep in mind to use load here because you're trying to access that variable inside of our item script, inside of our resource. And whenever you do that, you will have to load it beforehand. And apart from red, you notice that everything here is just a copy paste for the next array as well for each category. Now, if the player inventory does not have the item, we will load the item, change its amount to the loot amount, equaling it to the loot amount, and then we will put it inside of our player inventory. And if it does have the item already, we will load the item and just change the amount to uh, and add the loot amount to our existing current amount. So again, we take the load function to tell a variable inside of our item uh, that it should be changed to access it. We have to load it first. And then we are simply emitting the signal inventory changed. So everything again gets updated and that concludes it for the add item. Now to the remove item function. Again, we are passing a resource and a integer whenever we call that function. And as you can see in my testing uh, function, we also pass a item and the item amount. Now, if a player inventory has the item we're trying to remove from it, we will load that item and look inside its item amount and see if that item amount is less than or equal than one. And since we are always subtracting from that, we will always get something less than one. And in that case, we want to erase that item. We will erase it from the player inventory. And that signal down here will cause it to update and that way it won't be shown inside the player inventory. So it's being removed from our player inventory, but it won't be removed just by that inside of our quick box and inside of our other categories because that array is separate from our player inventory at this state. So we need to tell firstly the dragged item to be null because we don't want that data to persist so that we would place a already gone item into the quick box. And this here will cause the quick box to properly set null if it can't find its item inside the player inventory. And um, if the loot amount won't be below one, it will instead simply subtract the amount from the item amount that's inside. So in that case, it won't get erased from the player inventory. And that part is simply for the player inventory crops category. 
to remove it from there. So each time that we remove an item completely, the categories will also remove that button. Otherwise, that button would st still be where inside the categories. And uh, we copy paste that for each cap category again. Don't forget the emit signal. So everything gets updated after that. And yeah, that's basically it. And that's basically it for the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was more clear than some others. Keep in mind I'm a newbie as well, so there might be a lot of wrong with it, but I tried my best. And um, feel free to leave suggestions and uh, questions inside comments. And maybe I will do some more tutorials in the future. So this is what my inventory looks like in my game currently and as you can see lots of the things are the same and uh, yeah.